Hi guys, Jeffrey here. In this video, I'm gonna show you a concept that I call the paradox of change. And this concept is especially important for you to understand if you're in a position where you think you've changed enough or you think you've changed in a massive way, but your partner still does not want to believe in your changes or trust in your changes. And be sure to stick around to the very end of this video because every single one of our clients, they face the exact same objection and the same resistance. And if you want to even have a shot at saving your marriage, you have to understand this principle called the paradox of change and understand how to bust through it as well. And for those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Jeffrey and I help men in long-term relationships or in marriages with the right skills, with the right mindsets to be able to design a thriving relationship for yourself. So if you want more content on this topic, then be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell button as well to be notified when I post new videos every single week. And before we begin this video, I also want to let you know that the free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up is still open. So if you want to join that masterclass or if you want to submit your application for the Relationships Revival Program, then be sure to stick around to the very end of this video for the announcement on how you can join that masterclass and submit your application. Now let's start this video then by talking about what is the paradox of change. So the paradox goes something like this. You know, if you ask anyone in this world, anyone you wanna ask, they will tell you that they want to have a different outcome. They wanna become richer, they wanna become happier, they wanna have better relationships, better sex in their marriage and so on. But what most people don't realize here is that to get the different outcome, you have to be willing to do things differently. But here's where the paradox starts because as soon as they try to become someone different, instantly you will face what we call external resistance. So for example, when I decided to leave my job in data back then to become this relationships coach, everyone told me I was crazy. Everyone told me uh, I was making a mistake. Everyone seemed to question me, to doubt me, to have this resistance towards my decision in the beginning. So that was the external resistance. And the same thing happened in my relationship where, you know, when my relationship was breaking down, when I started to change the way I talk and I asked more questions and I asked different kinds of questions, I changed the tone of my voice and the mindset in which I approached conversations. My partner told me, why do you sound like a therapist? Stop doing that. Stop. You're never going to change my mind. Stop sounding so fake all the time. So as soon as you try to change your behavior, either mentally or externally, you're going to find that you're going to face that external resistance. But not only that, you're also going to find that you experience internal resistance. And you know, for my career, this was when I started to have my own business and I need to be playing the sales role, for example, or I need to be able to sell my program. And every time I went on a sales call or every time I went on this, uh, have to embody this new persona, I just felt so fake. I felt like a fraud. I felt disgusted every day after work. I just felt so sleazy, so pushy, so salesy, right? So not only did I have the external doubt, but I also faced the internal doubt. Some of this internal doubt is caused by the external doubt, but also some of this internal doubt is also sourced from within. Now in my relationship too, when I started to talk differently, ask questions, I started to get really nervous, to get really scared. And I started to also feel like fake, like this is not how you talk. You're not someone who spends two hours asking your partner questions, digging deeper, being compassionate and so on. That's not you. So again, even in the context of my relationship, I really had this internal doubt as well. So the paradox of change is called the paradox of change because you know, most people, they know that they need to become someone different to get to the different outcome. But as soon as they do, they face this very strong resistance externally, but also internally. And most people seeing this and feeling this, they back down. And so the paradox is that while they want to change, most people cannot change. And so they stay stuck in that cycle of failures pretty much forever. And this resistance didn't only happen for me, but if I watch all my hundreds of clients go through the journey, this happened to all of them as well. This is the natural artifact of the journey of any time you want to grow and become someone different to change, you're gonna face the paradox of change. This is a way of life. This is the way of nature. This is an inevitability. So if we understand this concept called the paradox of change, we also understand something called the value of resistance. And that, you know, we often think that growth and progress when it comes to saving relationships or even in life, we think of it either in two ways. One is we think of it as linear. So it's going upwards in this never ending march towards victory kind of mentality. Or we even imagine it sometimes to be strong at first and then it plateaus. Well, the implication of this is that Whenever we expect growth, we're expecting to try something, to try something new, 
and then immediately seeing results for that something new that we try. But in reality, growth really looks like this, where there's a value of resistance, as we call, where it dips first, and then after it dips, it goes back up again. And the reason why this dip happens again is that, one, you're going to face this external resistance, you're gonna face the internal resistance, so the self-imposed internal resistance, but you're also gonna face the externally imposed internal resistance. And so all these resistance is gonna feel like whatever you're trying, whatever you're changing is not gonna work at first. So now that we understand those two principles, let's talk about what the average person does or how they conduct their lives. Most people, they, what they do is they learn a new tactic from YouTube, from someone, from some book or whatever it is, and they try it once or a few times. So for example, let's say you change the way you talk. Let's say now you're starting to dig deeper and ask your partner more questions, deeper questions and so on. Instantly, your partner will start to resist you. She will call you a therapist. She will call you odd for being fake. She will tell you, stop trying to fix yourself or change yourself. I'm never gonna get back with you. Now, when they get this external resistance, they start to panic. They start to get really worried uh, from this external doubt and they start to doubt themselves internally as well. And because of this external and internal doubt, they start to get really anxious. And in this anxiety, they're gonna find that they naturally will slow down the things that they're doing, or even worse, they will quit what they're doing altogether. They will stop what they're doing altogether because they're saying, oh, it doesn't work in the immediate sense, forget it. This is why most people can never ever get the results they want. Not only in the context of a relationship, but also in the context of any part of life. Because again, anytime you want to be, go somewhere different to a new chapter in life, you're going to face this paradox of change. And if you don't know how to bust through it, you're always gonna be stuck in your current level. They're never able to build enough of a momentum to actually get massive results. Their results are always gonna be very tiny and very small and very marginal. In fact, if you do give up during this valley of resistance, that's gonna just confirm to your partner that whatever you just did, whatever changes you just made are manipulative and fake. And that's a bad thing. And so, for example, let's say in my business, if I told people, I wanted to become this relationship coach. And then people doubt me, people said like, are you serious, man? And then as soon as people told me like, are you serious? I go, oh, maybe I'm not, I don't know. Then that will make whatever promises I make before or in the future into something more of, as a, more of a moot point. No one's gonna believe me or trust me anymore because this, the first resistance I get, I'm going to back down. The same way in a relationship, you know, a lot of people, for example, uh, they tell their partner, I'm gonna do this for myself. I'm changing for myself. I am gonna better myself for myself. Then their partner tells them, you know, you realize that no matter how much you better yourself, no matter how you better yourself, I'm not coming back to you in the relationship. I'm never gonna come back to you. Or their partner tells them, for example, oh, you sound like a therapist. Stop talking like that. Stop asking more questions. So they get this external resistance and they instantly back down. They get scared and they back down. Don't you see how that will confirm in your partner's mind that whatever changes you were trying to make was just manipulative and fake. It was just a ploy to get her back. But it's not really something that you want to do, something that is real, something that is genuine, something that is deep. So I get a lot of emails, for example, from people saying, you know, Jeff, I'm so dead set on improving myself. I'm so dead set on like um, growing myself to the best version that I can be. And I want to buy a program because of that. But then we get on the call and they say, you know what? I don't know if this is the right time for me because like my partner just told me that well, whatever I do, whatever I do to change, there's nothing I can do to change to change her mind, that she's gonna be dead set on divorce anyway. So a lot of people don't understand the self-fulfilling prophecy of this kind of thinking in that if let's say you allow your partner's resistance, the external resistance to define what you do, to define your decisions, to define your motivation for bettering yourself, if you allow your partner's resistance to allow you to back down from your self-growth, you are just proving to her that, that you're not really serious about your self-growth. That you're only serious about your self-growth because you're trying to use it as a manipulation tactic to try to get her back. So most people don't understand here that it's the moment when your partner threatens divorce, threatens separation. That's the moment when your genuine intentions will really show. Are you doing this because you want to get her back as a ploy to get her back? Or are you doing this because you genuinely want to become better, regardless of what the outcome is, regardless of what she does, you want to become the best version of yourself. This will show whether your changes are real or fake. So keep that in mind here, that during this valley of resistance, that is when you cannot back down. That is when you cannot give up. That is when you have to double down on the process because that is the make or break. And if you watch the journeys that a lot of our clients go through, this point is always the make or break. 
because that is when your partner will really see you and your actions and your changes for what it really is. And that's when you cannot fake your changes any longer. So now let's look at the three reasons here of why most people cannot break through the paradox of change and why people tend to give up way too easily. So number one is that they have the wrong expectation of growth again. So again, most people think that growth looks like this exponential thing or this linear thing. And so usually what happens is that we try something new, a new tactic, and we expect that new tactic to, to work quite immediately, right? Or at least go upwards immediately, but we don't expect it to go downhill first. And so if we do not see this immediate um, result, instead we see things going downhill, we're gonna give up. And this is a very, very tricky part of this because the paradox of change doesn't just stay flat, it goes downhill progress. So it feels like sometimes you can be doing the right thing, but it feels like you can be doing the wrong thing. And that's why a lot of people give up during this value of resistance. The second reason is they focus on tactics, not principles. And so most people, when they research things, when they want to learn about relationships, they just stay with the tactics, the what to do, what to say, the immediate things, the easy things. But they don't really care about the why and the deeper principles behind it because it's easier to focus on tactics. Now to give you a very simple example of the difference between principles thinking and tactics thinking. So let's imagine here, let's give this analogy, this fantastical analogy that you are sitting in a room and in the middle of the room here, there's like a massive ice cube, massive ice cube. The temperature of the room right now is 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is below freezing point. And you want to melt this ice cube. So if you're thinking via tactics, someone will come across to you and tell you, hey, what you can do is you can take out the hair dryer and start heating up the room. Just, just point the hair dryer in the room and start melting it, right? And so you start doing that. You follow this tactic, what other people are saying, you plug in your hair dryer and start heating up the room. So 10 degrees becomes 11, becomes 12, becomes 13, 14, 15, but it's still below the 32 Fahrenheit that is the melting point. But because you only follow the tactics and you never understood the principles behind how heat works, how energy works, the melting point of ice, you start heating up the room from 10 degrees to 15 degrees and you midway you go, you know what, screw this crap. This is not working. The hair dryer thing is not working because my ice cube is not melting. That's what happens if you follow tactics. But if you understand the principles of how ice cube melts, how this hair dryer is adding more energy, more heat to the room. And that while you don't see the ice melting right now, it will eventually melt eventually, right? You have this principle to keep you going when you don't see any external evidence that the ice is melting because you understand the principle of how ice melts. So the one person uses tactics and if you're relying on tactics, it's really hard to go through this value of resistance because you don't know the principles of what you're doing that what you're doing is actually progress. All you can see is just an external manifestation of whatever you're doing, but sometimes whatever we do may not manifest externally until much later. But if you're guided by principles, you are more likely to get through this value of resistance because you understand that while you don't see the external change right now, you're guided by principles and you understand that what you're doing is guided by principles and it will work eventually. Now, the last reason why people struggle to break through this paradox of change is that they anchor the change to the wrong thing. So two videos ago, we talked about the four stages, uh, the four internal stages that you need to go through. You must master if you want to rebuild a relationship. And we talked about this um, principle of being, doing, and having. And so most people, what they do is they focus on the having first. So they focus on the outcome, the results, and what they want to have. In this case, they want to have this result of reconciling the relationship, saving their marriage, and so on. And their motivation is really from this having part. So if they're coming closer to the having here, and they're getting closer to what they want, then they continue to do. They have a high motivation, and it tells them that, oh, the doing is the right doing. But if they are going away from the results, which will happen if you're in the value of resistance, they change what they're doing. They tell themselves what they're doing is not working and they stop. And if this is the direction you're going, that you are letting your having define your motivation and define what you do, then you will never make it through the paradox of change. You can never make it through the value of resistance. And you're always gonna be stuck in this cycle of failures forever. So now let's talk about what we actually need to learn how to do. So first thing again is we need to change our expectation of growth. We need to understand that the value of resistance and the paradox of change is gonna be a real 
resistance. Every single time we want to go to a new chapter, a new level in our lives. And understand that for a lot of our clients in the context of a relationship, this value can last from six months all the way up to two years. When it comes to my business, this value lasted four years. When it comes to my relationship, this value lasted one whole year. So you have to understand that this value of resistance is gonna be very, very massive. It depends on how much you've broken your relationship, how much confirmation bias you've let fester over your old self. I mean, it depends on a lot of factors, but expect it to last quite a while. Now, I wanna add a massive caveat here in that some people here are gonna say, for example, well, so what you're saying, Jeff, is that all I need to do now is just keep going with the same things I'm doing right now and just be relentless about it, be stubborn about it. Yes and no. So you have to understand here that not all changes are built the same. And you need to make sure that your changes are not only massive, but they're also the right kinds of changes. So you going to the gym, you going to you know, get all more, more muscle and losing weight and working on your pies, or you making more money, or you giving more gifts, all these things, they don't really matter. Again, we talk about the three layers of changes that really matter, the frameworks, the mindsets, and the identity shifting. We have to master those three layers of changes because those are the only three layers that really, really matter. That's all you need. Everything else is a mood point. So I get really concerned when people misinterpret this in that they think they're bettering themselves, but they're really bettering themselves in all the wrong ways. And they take this message and say, oh, all I gotta do is just double down on the wrong changes. No, you have to make sure that the changes are correct, they're massive, and then understand how to stick with it as well. Now, the second thing you must do is you have to start gaining the patience to learn the first principles in everything that you learn, not just focus on the tactics. Now, if you want to learn more about what first principles mean, you can join me in my masterclass that I talked about in the beginning of this video. So to give you a very quick example of what my clients do, let's say they're starting to change the way they talk and they're starting to ask more questions. And the number one resistance people get is that, oh, stop talking like that. You never talk like that. Stop sounding like a therapist. If you understand the first principles behind the frameworks and the mindset, for one, you're gonna see this as an opportunity to plant more seeds using your mindset. But not only that, you're gonna use your frameworks here to guide the conversation from a negative to a positive. So you might say, for example, hey, thanks for telling me that, and I understand why you would feel that way, why you would think that way. I totally understand that. Um, I would feel the same way if I was you. Now, the reason why I'm changing is that, you know, my old self was someone who didn't really ask questions. And because of that, that led to a lot of misunderstandings. And I think that brought us to where we are today, where we feel so repressed, we have destroyed safety, we have so many conflicts and misunderstandings. What I've learned is the, the importance of learning how to ask questions, how to dig deeper, and how to find information from the other point of view, not just my point of view. My hope is that you know, by asking more questions and the right questions, even though it sounds weird in the short term, my hope is that this will remove the conflicts that we had in the future, all the troubles that we had in the future. And so that's one example of how we can use the combination of mindsets and also the combination of the frameworks to be able to guide a conversation from a negative into positive every single time. And this is again guided by not understanding the tactics, but down deeper to understanding the main principles behind all the frameworks and the mindsets as well. And the last thing to do here is to really change your anchor of your change. So again, most people go from this having, this having determines their doing, and often what they're doing determines their being. But I want you to reverse this cycle a bit so that you're focusing on the being side. You're focusing on the mindsets, on changing your paradigms, on changing your internal programming, you're changing your internal identity. Then once you define your being and you will start doing more effortlessly, more confidently and more effectively as well. And once you do more confidently and more effectively, then you will have. You will get the outcomes you want. It's a matter of when, not if. And this is why in our program, we structure our program so that we focus on this identity shifting as the lowest part, the base, the most important base. And once you understand how to shift your identity, then we focus on the mindsets and the frameworks, which is the doing part, really. And because their motivation is really the being, not really the having, our clients are able to go through that value of resistance in a very powerful and a very strong way. And this is how they break through their partner's confirmation bias. This is how they break through their current cycle of failures and finally bust through to that new level. All our clients start in very hopeless situations, but no matter how hopeless of a situation they start in, they can break through and get massive changes in themselves, but also massively change how their partner perceives them, even though they started out in a very hopeless situation, like most of you are probably. So just to recap here, let's differentiate 
the people who are usually successful versus the people who cannot get out of the cycle of failures. So failures stay failures because they do not understand the paradox of change. And they let other people define what they do, who they are, and what they are. But people who are successful, they become successful because they understand how to define who they want to become first, what they want to be first, the identity they want to have. And they have a strong conviction in that being, in the identity that they want to have. Then that being defines the doing, and the doing will naturally lead to the having. So for example, for my business, you know, four years ago when I started this, everyone thought I was crazy. Everyone thought this was a bad idea and nobody was on my side. I was getting intense resistance. Fast forward to today because I've broken through that paradox of change, nobody questions this decision anymore. People now define me as who I am, as who I am today, right? It took me to have a very high conviction of who I want to become first and then I let other people catch up. While most people, they let other people define who they are and who they can be. And same thing for my relationship. Right now, even though, you know, four years ago, five years ago, my partner saw me as my old self. And whenever I tried to change, she had very intense resistance towards it. Now she sees me as who I am today. She doesn't doubt who I am today. This is my new identity. But that took me to really have a high conviction in who I want to become. Fight through people's resistance and change despite people's resistance. And then other people caught up to who I am today. While other people, again, let other people define who they are and who they can be. So in our relationship survival program, these are the kinds of mindset shifts, of internal shifts, that allows them to be very, very strong in this journey, that lowers this anxiety that they feel, but also allows them to master the frameworks and the mindsets and just embodying this new self and the identity shifting a lot faster. And because they can embody this changes a lot faster, they can not only bust through that paradox of change and that value of resistance a lot faster, but they can also show their partner that no matter how hopeless their partner feels right now, their partner could be telling them that there is no hope in hell they're getting back together. Uh, we're dead set on divorce or separation. That at the end of the day, when you change yourself in a massive way like this, your partner will not be able to resist you. Yes, she could still be divorcing the old you, but she cannot resist your new you. And that is the crucial difference here. So if you want to learn more about the process of how you can go about doing this, growing in this way, just like all our clients have, then I want you to join me in my free masterclass and the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up. In that masterclass, I'll show you the exact steps that all my students have used to rebuild themselves and also rebuild their relationships from the ground up. And if you want to join that masterclass, you can click the link above my head right here or also go to down in the comments below or check out the description below this video as well. And secondly, if you want to download a guide with containing one of the frameworks that we have on how to have conversations, how to lead conversations in a way that leads to better understanding and better win-wins and avoids arguments, then I also want you to download the guide I have for you above my head right here or also down below this video. And finally, if you want to join a free Facebook group, a free community where you can get help from a member of my team or even myself, then I also want you to join me in my free Facebook group down below this video. In the meantime, do leave a comment below with your questions or thoughts uh, about this video. I would love to hear from you. And if you found this video to be eye-opening or insightful, then I want you to subscribe to this channel and click the like button as well because it really helps the channel out and helps spread the good word to uh, more people. For now, I will leave you with these two other videos with more mindsets and more skills for you to be able to design a thriving relationship for yourself. For now, I will see you in the next video.